Hey, meow. Yeah. Okay, let's quickly finish up um, with your presentation. So, I'll give you another topic. How about... Is it important yes. to know a second language? Should everyone learn a second language? Okay, Meow, can you talk for about a minute about whether or not people should know a second language? Yes, people... Hello? Hello. Okay, go ahead. Not working. No? Okay. All right, we'll just start our topic for this class. So, um, this is intermediate reading. Okay, reading. So, today we're going to talk about how to skim and scan a reading. Is what for the Sandy Hurricane? When the oh, maybe. Well, maybe. I know people's power keeps flicking out, so. That might have been. That might have happened. <laughs> okay. What? Um. So just for a couple of minutes, let's just chat. Um. What's? Oh, Meow's typing. Meow, you're still there. Birdie's gone. So what's everybody doing this weekend coming up? Nobody? Nobody has any plans for the weekend? Nothing? Uh, a birthday party. Yeah. A birthday a party. Birthday. Is it's it your birthday. birthday? Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> I buy a lot of tequila. <laughs> Some beers. Friends. A lot of tequila? <laughs> yeah. Great. All right. Okay, let's. So we're going to be talking about skimming and scanning readings. So I've got a little bit of a presentation that we're going to have to read to talk about this, to introduce us to this topic. Bertie, you have a lot of background noise, so I'm just going to mute you until it's your turn to talk, okay? Okay. Okay. So here we go. We'll start with a bell. Okay. Can you read the first uh, three points? Yes. Okay. Reading is an important part of learning English. Please get to know to how to improve your reading skills with, with help to improve reading by using skills you use in your own language. In other words, one of the best tips on, on improving reading is to think about how you read in your own language. Good. Uh, Ferdy, can you read the next three points? Okay, uh, in order there, right? Start by thinking. Uh, yes, okay. 
start by thinking about how you uh, how you read different uh, documents how do you read the newspaper how do you read Nolan's how do you read the uh, read Rainer such such train, train schedules train schedules and so on take uh, time to take an upon this uh, will help give you cl clues on how to read in English heaven if you uh, if you don't understand very sing uh, si uh, single word Good. Oh. <laughs> even if you don't understand every single word okay okay and Jose can you read the next couple points yeah sure uh, ask yourself this question do I read every word in my own language when I am reading a schedule, summarize, or other outline in document? The answer is most definitely no. Reading in English is like reading in your native language. Good. Okay. Two more points. Um, meow, is your microphone working now? Meow, if you're muted, you can unmute yourself by clicking on the microphone in the top right-hand corner. Hello? Meow? Yeah. Okay, you're there now. Okay, good. Um, if you click on my screen, you can't see a document. Okay, I'll just paste it in the chat. So, um, Ferdy, can you please stay muted um, until it's your turn to talk, just because you have background noise? Uh, Meow, can you read what I've just pasted in the chat box? So this means that it is not. This means. Uh, no, I'm that sorry. Is... I'm talking to Meow. Okay. Meow, are you there? Okay, Meow's having some trouble. So we'll go on to Renee. Renee, can you read the next two points? Okay. This means that it is not always necessary to read and understand each and every word in English. Remember that reading skills in your native language and English are basically the same. Okay, good. So here's a quick overview of the four types of reading skills used in everyday language. So there's four types. The first type is skimming. Skimming is used to understand the gist or the main idea of a text. The second type is scanning. Scanning is used to find a particular piece of information in a text. And then there's reading, which is used for pleasure and general understanding, and there's also intensive reading. Okay? So, you can use these reading skills in a number of ways to improve other areas of English, such as pronunciation, grammar, and increasing vocabulary. So, we're just going to briefly talk about all four of these, and then Today we're going to focus specifically on skimming and scanning. So, for the first one, skimming, I'm just going to get a bell. Can you read this please? Uh, skimming is used to quickly cater the most important information or the gist. The run gist. Your eye, the gist. Uh, run your eyes over the text nothing important information. Use a skimming to quickly get up to a speed on a current business situation. It's not essential to understand each word when skimming. Good. Uh, Ferdy, can you read these examples? Examples of uh, schemas, skimming. The newspaper quickly to get to uh, uh, general General, general, general new, uh, news of the day. 
magazines quickly to the discover which are active activists you would like to read in more the the de, de, delight detail detail business and travel bro brochures quickly to get informed informed good informed so skimming uh, we use it to get the main point of a text or the gist of a text so it's just running your eyes through a text really quickly to get the main idea you don't have to actually read every single word you just want the main idea so we use this when we're reading the newspaper magazines or business and travel brochures just to quickly get informed or to get the main idea of things okay next one is scanning um, Jose yeah can you read about scanning okay. scanning scanning is used to find a particular piece of information run your eyes over the text looking for the specific piece of information you need keep going this is Okay, use scanning on the schedule, meeting plans, etc., in order to find the specific details you require. If you see words or phrases that you don't understand, don't worry when you're scanning. Good. Okay, examples of scanning. Um, Renee? The what's on TV section of your newspaper, a train, airplane schedule. A conference guide. Good. So we use scanning when we want a particular piece of information. So this isn't, it's different from skimming. When we're skimming, we want the main idea of the overall text. When we're scanning, we want a specific piece of information in the text. Okay? So that's the difference. Um, when we're looking at things like schedules, plans for meetings, things like that, um, we're looking for a specific piece of information. So when we're looking at the what's on TV section of our newspaper, we want to find out like what time a specific TV show's on. Or if we're looking at a train or airplane schedule, we want to know the specific time that a certain train leaves. Um, a conference guide is the same thing. You're looking for a specific meeting see, to see when it's going to take place. Okay, so scanning is for one specific piece of information. And then extensive reading. Um, back to Abel. Extensive reading is used to obtain a general understanding of a subject and includes reading longer texts for pleasure as well as business books. Use intensive reading skills to improve your general knowledge of business procedures. Do not worry if you understand each word. If you don't, sorry. <laughs> if, if you, you don't, don't understand each word. Okay, um, some examples of extensive reading are the latest marketing strategy book, a novel you read before going to bed, or a magazine article that interests you. So extensive reading is when you read the entire piece of work word for word and it's just to get a general understanding it's something that you do because you enjoy it not because you have to so something like reading a novel reading a magazine it's um, extensive reading can take a long period of time it could take one day it could take a month so it's just something that you're doing for pleasure okay the next one is intensive reading uh, for Theresa are you there yep um, can you see my screen? Uh, wait, wait. Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, can you read this piece about intensive reading? By the way, it's delay in here. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Intensive reading. Intensive reading is used on shorter text in order to extract specific information. It includes very close accurate reading for detail. Use intensive reading skills to grasp the details of a specific situation. In this case, it is important that you understand each word, number, or fact. Okay, good. So intensive reading, some examples are um, grasp. Where's grasp? 
Grasp means understand, gather. So grasping the detail of something is um, usually you use the word sorry it's easier when you can see me. Usually you use the word grasp when you're talking about one specific idea that you want to understand. So you're saying I grasp that context, that concept. So it's grasping or understanding one specific thing. Okay? Okay. Um, some examples of intensive reading. A bookkeeping report, an insurance claim, a contract. So intensive reading is different from extensive because this time it's to grasp or understand the details of a specific situation. So you do need to read every single word, but it's number or fact. But in this case, it's not reading for pleasure. It's reading because you need to. So for example, a contract, if you're going to sign a contract for a job, you want to make sure that you know every single thing that's written in that contract. So that's intensive reading. So today we're going to practice skimming and scanning, but first I just want to go back over them to make sure that you guys understand. So, first one, skimming. Um, can somebody tell me what skimming is? Uh, when you read uh, one text and you have to obtain the main idea of the whole text. Yep, so to get the main idea or... Has everybody heard this word before, the gist? The, the gist. The gist. It's, it's not gist, it's gist. So it's pronounced, it sounds like it starts with a J. Gist. Gist just means the main idea. You say, get the gist of it. It's an expression. It means you get the main idea of something. So good, that's skimming. What about scanning? Anybody? It's for a particular information. Yeah. Target so, setting, how about blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. Searching for particular information. Um, extensive reading. Uh, reading for pleasure. Uh, you need to use your knowledge. Good. So novels, magazines, things like that. And intensive reading. You have to read like a contract. So it's still reading every single word of something like you would with the extensive, but it's for a specific purpose. So when we need li every like a contract. Detail. Yeah, you need to know the details. Good. So that's intensive reading. Okay, good. So today we're going to look at skimming and scanning. So let me get to our... First thing we're going to look at is skimming, okay? So... Um, I'll get away from this. I'll explain it first. So when you're reading a newspaper um, and you don't have a lot of time, but you're interested in an article, you might just read the title and the first and last sentence or the first and last paragraph, or you might go through and just read the first sentence of every other paragraph or something like that. That's called skimming, to get the gist of the article. So you're not necessarily sitting there and reading every single word in this newspaper article. You're just getting the gist of it. Um, a lot of the time, you can get the gist of a newspaper article just by looking at the title. So you get the general idea of what it's going to be about. But also, if you look at the first and last sentence, that's going to kind of frame the article. So it, if we look at this, the title and the first and last sentence of an article, we can get the main idea or the gist of it. So I've gone to Google News and um, I've copied and pasted a bunch of articles last night, like real news that's happening right now. Um, I've just pasted the title and the first and last sentence. So I want us to kind of look, read the title and a couple of sentences, and then um, I need you guys to explain to me what the gist or the main idea of the article is based just on that. Okay, so this is like a practice with skimming. And okay. hello to Futhurza and Tommy. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. hello. Nice so again. we're talking about skimming and scanning and reading. Some reading strategies, okay? So I'll go back. Okay. Here. Okay. So we'll read the headline in the first and last sentence of a news article. We will then discuss the guest at topic of the article. 
it's important that we don't accidentally read the entire article while doing this activity, so I'm not going to provide the whole article for you. Only the headlines and the first and last sentences. Okay? So, oops. Here's the first one. Actually, we can probably just do this in the chat. So, I'm just in a dinner eating that. That's okay. okay. Yeah, there is a sub. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna share it. Okay, first one. Uh, um, how about uh, Ferdy? Yes, reading. Okay, can you read the title? This is the title of the article, and then I have the first and last sentence there. So can you just read it all for us? Okay, I'm read. Start. Yep. Obama focuses on the study after math, after scamming, coming, camping, campaign plans, camping plans. First sec, uh, first sentence, first sense, sentence. Barack, uh, Barack Obama scrambled uh, plans to ca camping on Wednesday, the, the third day in a row as he and his rear, rear, rear beat rival. Romy, rival beat Rommel, sought to negative, the, negative <laughs> the tri no. tricky Politics wait, uh, waiters uh, the street of the super storm uh, Sunday. The super uh, storm. Super storm. 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 Super storm. Hurricane. Storm. I know the storm. Okay, Hurricane. good. Can you, can you read the last sentence now? Me? Yep, keep going. Last sentence polling has been dis uh, distributed. By the, disruptive by the storm, but uh, the the latest uh, slow the two neck and neck with uh, money and join Romney and join a one or two point lean national nationally uh, nationally, but Obama had in five of the eight swing states. Romana in two, and the two light in Virginia. Tied in Virginia. This right. <laughs> when you pronounce navigate, make sure you pronounce the V before the G. So navigate. Okay. 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 So Obama focuses on Sandy aftermath after scrapping campaign plans. So we've got the title. We've got the first and last sentence. So, can somebody tell me the gist of the article? So, summarize or tell me the gist of the article. It's basically the, the things that Barack Obama is doing for to prevent uh, about the superstorm Sandy and the meeting with Rumi. Okay. It, it, it's, it's me. Oh, Rumi is the, the content. Mitt, it's Mitt me. Romney. 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 It's a uh, cannot an airplane can, cannot use it for an uh, like a Barack Obama president and uh, so in a it, trade meaning about and uh, that in a. Uh, Romani and uh, that side and uh, twice and uh, get an uh, nationality and uh, like uh, talks. That's the meaning mm -hmm. that okay. he stopped the campaign. Campaign, yeah. So, so basically, what it's saying is that Barack Obama had certain campaign plans. But because of this new this sandy storm, he's scrapping them. Do you understand what that means? Scrapping campaign plans. Campaign plans are broken. Like, uh, no, no. Yeah, he's he's ditching them, giving up on them. Uh, how tight on the schedule it was, but then uh, uh, super storm and Sunday came for and uh, like uh, campaigns uh, cannot uh, be continued. 
Right, so he's scrapping, ditching, he's not focusing on his campaign plans anymore because instead he's going to focus Emergency. on this Superstorm yeah. Sandy, which, it tells us, stirred the political waters. New so York. because there's this all of this polling going on right now um, between Barack Obama, Obama and uh, Mitt Romney, everything going on with the superstorm has kind of directed the attention away from that. So this article is basically talking about how the superstorm Sandy is affecting Barack Obama and Mitt Romney's political um, political standpoint. It's been disrupted by the storm. But it's still it's still going on, right? So it hasn't stopped. It's still happening. Romney is leading nationally, but right. Obama is ahead in some of the swing states. So this article is talking about it's going to be talking about the superstorm, how it's affecting American politics, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next thing. How about Renee? Do you want to read this one? Yeah. All right. Slick Windows Phone 8 and the required taste. After spending hours with the Windows Phone 8, I felt like I need to go for a walk, for a walk and chill out. There will be a Nokia phone coming in the next week that will have enhanced camera Camera features and wireless charging. Good. So this is the first sentence. This is the last sentence. So we're we're missing a lot of information here, but we can still get the gist. Okay. Yeah. So can somebody try to summarize this article? Slick. Windows um, phone sucks. Slick. No, slick means like fancy or. Um, like the new iPhone is really fancy and it's really up and coming, so it's something slick and cool. So, okay. Um, first sentence After spending hours with the Windows Phone 8, I felt like I needed to go for a walk and chill out. And then there will be a Nokia phone coming in the next few weeks that will have enhanced camera features and wireless charging. So, even though we only have two sentences and we're missing a huge amount of information here, we can still get the gist of the article. So can somebody try to summarize it for me and tell me what they think the article is going to be telling us? Anyone? Well, he said, like, the Windows phone is the best thing that the person who, who writes this article is never, never seen before. Right. So... This is a new thing for this guy. He's just yeah. testing it out, right? And yeah. what does what does he think about it? Uh, Windows Phone Eight, and I, I I'm not sure, but iPhone what Five is his and opinion. Does he like it? iPhone yeah. Five and the Galaxy like and the S3 now. Renee, you think he likes it? Yeah. I. Because because he's no. ex uh, exciting, and he said there will be a Nokia phone. And the Nokia okay. phone has the Windows Phone 8. A Nokia phone? Let me write it down here. Nokia, Nokia phone, phone is a, you, is you, a completely you, you, different brand. European brand in the, the Windows and Nokia phones are not the same thing. Company. So, um, in this first sentence, so let's just analyze the first sentence. After spending hours with the Windows Phone 8, I felt like I needed to go for a walk and chill out. So, I'm going to paste it in the chat so you can see it again while you're looking at me. But after spending hours with this phone, I felt like I needed to go for a walk. So, basically what it's saying is this phone is way too complicated. It's a lot of work. I don't really like it. After I spent hours with it, I needed to just go cool off somewhere. It's just too much for me. That's that's what I gather from what he's saying, okay? So saying I need to go for a walk and chill out means I need to, like, decompress. It's too much. Um, I don't like it. And then when we see that the last sentence, I'll paste it in the chat, 
So again, like I said, we are missing a, a whole ton of information here. But um, the last sentence says that there will be a Nokia phone coming in the next week that will have enhanced camera features and wireless charging. So there's two different spins you could take on this. Either it could be leaning towards his opinion uh, being that the Nokia phone is going to be better than the Windows phone because it's going to have an enhanced camera, wireless charging. Mm -hmm. These are features of the phone. So it yeah. might be that he's leaning towards saying this Nokia phone looks like it's going to be a lot better than the Windows phone. That's one option. Or it could just be an informative article and he's telling us just so you know, there's going to be another new phone next week. Yeah. Okay, so this first, this first sentence is very, um, it's very opinionated, right? So it's an opinion article. It's not necessarily going to be an informative article. So even though the article's title, let's look at the article's title. Slick Windows Phone 8, an acquired taste. Can anybody break that down for me? What does that say? Slick Windows Phone 8, an acquired taste. Do we know what an acquired taste means? It, it's a... Uh, wax or not meaning? An acquired uh, taste. Think about it. Um, or not a new phone for him? Yeah, it's a new phone for him, but the phrase acquired taste means something specific. So um, if we're talking about food, you could say, um, I tried curry last night. Um, I tried like curried chicken last night. I really didn't like it. It was too spicy. Maybe if I keep trying it again and again, I'll start to like it. It's an acquired taste. It's a taste oh. that you oh. like after a certain amount of time maybe but right away it's just not something that's interesting to you. Does everybody understand? So acquired, it's something that you acquire over time. A taste that you gather over time. So when you take that phrase and you put it in this context, slick Windows Phone 8, an acquired taste. What do, you think that's, what do you think that's saying? You have to use it many times to, to understand how it works. Mm -hmm. So it's complicated. Yeah. Um, Sheriff Sammy's typing. A desired feature, yep. Um, that would be a desired taste. Acquired taste means that it's something that you might like over time, but it's just not something that you're going to like right away. So it's kind of got a bit of a negative swing to it, this title. It's kind of telling us that He's not overly excited about this phone. He thinks that he doesn't like it right now. Maybe he'll like it in the future. It's an acquired taste for him. Okay? So, yes. Like right, when you buy a Mac, you don't understand how it works, and you have, oh, man, it sucks. But when you know how it works, you say, okay, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, good. Let's go to the next one. That's actually funny you said that because I just bought a Mac a couple weeks ago. Still getting used to it. <laughs> After using a PC for like 20 years. <laughs> so. Excuse me, I have a question. Sure. Uh, just I wonder if you are reading from something or you are just copying and pasting the words. Uh, no, I'm reading from something. I'll just um, I'll Can share my screen again. I'm sorry. Right technically. Okay. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. Who wants to read? Okay, I am. Okay. First sentence, last sentence. Title is okay? Okay, go. Start with the title. Title. Three more deaths from many meningitis. 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 I'm going to type how it's meningitis. pronounced. Meningitis. Men in. Meningitis. Meningitis. Look in the chat. Meningitis. Meningitis. Good. Meningitis. And yep, keep uh, going. Outbreak linked to injections. And see more 
patients have patients uh, patients patients have uh, died after contracting fungal mango many many finger meningitis many meningitis from potentially trained trained was steroid Mejections supplied by Manchester, no, 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 Massachusetts, Massachusetts company, the U.S. centers for disease control and preven prevention said on Tuesday, bring the this toll from the outbreak to 28 nationwide. Good. Last sentence. Last sentence. House authority have said the facility near Boston failed to make medication in sterile sterile conditions. Okay. Good. Who knows what meningitis is? Mm -hmm. It's a disease, inflammation, it's a men meningitis. Good. Fungal meningitis? Fungal meningitis. That's what we're talking about. So we're talking about a specific disease. It's okay if you can't quite pronounce it, but I have it typed there, meningitis. That's how, you say, how it's said. Okay, so let's go back to the screen here. It attacks the head, I think. First thing when we're trying to come up with the gist is looking at the title. Three more deaths from meningitis outbreak linked to injections. So this title tells us a lot. Yeah. Tells us about three things. So what are the three things? Oops, one, two, three. What are the three things that this title tells us? Three deaths. Three, yeah, three deaths. The, death, the meningitis and the injections. injections. Three deaths. There is a menin. Meningitis outbreak. There are some types of injections causing these deaths. Right? So those are the three things that this title is telling us. Even just from that title, even just from that title, we've pretty much already got the gist of the article, right? So that title tells us a lot, and that happens a lot of the time with news articles because that's what they try to do. They try to make titles and pack as much information in there as they can to really tell people what their article is going to be about. So in this one, the first sentence, three more patients have died after contracting fungal meningitis from potentially tainted steroid injections supplied by a Massachusetts company. The U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention said on Tuesday, bringing the death toll from the outbreak to 28 nationwide. That's the first sentence. Last sentence. Health authorities have said its facility near Boston failed to make medications in sterile conditions. So, anybody, can you summarize this article? And the disease and the people in the has died and the and the pharmacy and the cannot in the send sending it in the cannot meaning mm -hmm. could not send it in the pharmacy. Good. So the last sentence: Health authorities have said its facility near Boston failed to make medications in sterile conditions. That's an important sentence. That tells us. Basically, that's the why of the article. So the injections that are going on um, were made, the needles that are used for these injections were made in unsterile conditions. Because of that, they're spreading the meningitis and causing deaths. So that last sentence is really, really critical to the whole article. Um, so just from reading the title and the last sentence, you don't even have to read that first sentence. Even just reading the title and the last sentence, you've already got the gist, right? Okay. So that's that's skimming. So when you're reading newspaper articles, I don't know about you guys, when I'm reading the newspaper, I don't sit there and read every single word in articles. I never do, um, unless I'm really, really interested in it, right? So 
you read the title, you read a couple sentences, sometimes you scan down to the bottom, read the last bit, and you pretty much know what happened. So this okay. is kind of an example of how, how to do that, how to skim. Okay? Does it's, anyone have any questions? It's title reading about the uh, ah sorry about title reading, subtitle reading, if interesting uh, reading about or sen sentence meaning. Yeah, so getting the gist based on the title and the yeah. first and last sentence. Okay, okay, I have some more, but um, we might not have time, so I'm going to go to the next thing. So the next exercise is scanning. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Mira. For this exercise, you have to first read the question and then skim the text for your answer. To prevent you from doing an extensive reading of the TV schedule, you have one minute for each question. So for this one, I'm actually going to give you the copy of the TV schedule because it's kind of hard to see the whole thing on my screen. So I've uploaded it to Google Docs. It's right here. And I'll just put it on Google Drive for you. One second. No preview available. No? Okay, I'll try again. One second. Download and uh, have. No preview available. Download and uh, Just wait one have. minute. Okay. There. Can everybody see it? Yeah. Yes, okay. I can see it. So that is the text that we're going to... Yeah, it does, eh? <laughs> so that's the text that we're going to refer to, okay? So now we're going to be practicing scanning. So we're looking for a specific piece of information in a text. Please don't sit there and read the whole TV schedule because that will kind of kill the purpose of the activity, okay? So okay. I'm going to ask you a specific question, and I want you to find the specific piece of information in the schedule. Okay. First okay. question: Does everybody have the schedule open? Oh, yeah, I have opened it. No, okay. no. I no. Do. This link here. No, no. You can either click on that or click the Google Drive tab, and you should be able to open it there. Okay. First question. Jack has a video. He can watch both documentaries without having to make a video. Oh, wait. Jack has a video. Can he watch both documentaries without having to make a video? Nature reviewed 7 o'clock and uh, FNB. Just take, just take a minute to look at the schedule before you answer. 7 o'clock. Nature Can review. You repeat, please. Yes. Can Jack watch documentaries without having to record? Can he watch both documentaries without having to record? So this should only take you maybe 10 seconds to find the answer. Not even. I can tell you the answer for this one. Nice Just... study. Can it's he watch good. both documentaries that are on without having to record one? So it should only take you a couple seconds because if you look at the TV schedule, there aren't any TV shows that are really overlapping. It's Earth. not like three things are on. FNB? Art for everyone? Where are the documentaries? It's your money. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen. So, on channel CBC, where's the documentary? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just no scan through yeah, the word documentary, right? Yeah. That one that is in the living room, art of everyone. There's the first documentary. Okay, now... Oh, yeah, yeah. So on CBC, there's a yeah, documentary yeah. on at 11. Now if we look uh, at, you know, 
FNB. Where's the documentary? Oh, there. Documentary. Seven. At seven. Yes. At seven. I've got. FNB. Yep. There's okay. one on at seven. Last channel. ABN. Documentary. F documentary. Travelable. No. Oh. Quickly scanning. No, there isn't one. Okay. So do you see how I did that? I'm just quickly scanning the text. I'm, I know that I'm looking for documentaries, so all I'm doing is looking for the word documentary. Found it twice, so there's a documentary on CBC at 11 and on FNB at 7. So you, can he you watch both of them without having to record one? The answer I is yes, he, because they're I on think at you first look for the hours and then Pardon? read the... I think scanning here should be the technique is you look for the hours then read the bold uh, uh, titles and when you suspect something like a documentary you start reading quickly the uh, paragraph yep. like uh, you scan the CVC quickly until you reach 11 you find it says mama art of everyone looks like uh, something documentary and then when you scan the paragraph you find the documentary word this means this is documentary Good, that's because another technique. It, will be, it so, will be very difficult to run for documentary immediately because it doesn't have something specific in it, like it doesn't have capital or uh, it is not either, like it is not bold. Just good, file. So, so techniques for scanning. I'm just typing this in the chat. One is the one that I did, a specific word, documentary. Mm. Another one is look at the titles yes. and whichever ones look like they might be documentaries. And here in this case, your separation Read the is our. Quickly to find out, right? So because the titles are bold, they draw your attention more easily. And, and ours, because they are separations, like 11, Good. the next one will start from 12, then I know it is uh, it is the end of the first one and the, the beginning of the next one. Exactly, so there's a couple different strategies that you can use to scan. Okay, so here I'll ask you another question. Is there a TV show on about making good investments? I'll type it. Is there a TV show on about making good investments? Yep. So take a minute, see if you can find it, and then give me your answer. F F N B. It's your money. Nahisati. F N B. Oops. Sorry, one second. I have to get back to my. Okay, so which one did you say? It's your money. F N B. Nine thirty. It's your money. FNB. It's your money. That's right. And this favorite game show could make or break you, depending on how you place your bets. Does everybody agree that that's about making good investments? Yep. Yep. So, how did you figure that out? Did you look at the title? Did you look for the word? How did you how did you figure it out? You said investment and invest money. Yep, but in this case it doesn't say investments anywhere. So what about what about this show tells you that it's gonna be talking about investments? The title? The title has the word money in it, right? Yeah. So that's a pretty big yep. giveaway. You're talking about, about investments um, and the title is uh, money. Money variety show, this one. Ah, okay. Wrong. Okay, good. So, you look keywords. You look for look for keywords relating pump, to specific. Pump those white, 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 white. Ten o'clock. In this case. And the ABN. In this okay. Okay, let's do another one. Um. 
You were thinking about traveling to the USA for a vacation. Which show should you watch? ABM Travel Abroad. CNL. ABN 6 p.m. ABN travel, abroad. travel Abroad. Good. And you found that really quickly, right? Right. So how, did, how did you find uh, this? Not the, not the, uh, okay. California is in the U.S. Right? California is in the U.S. Good. And what about the title? Travel Abroad. Travel, <laughs> travel so you can Abroad. So quickly skim, look for the word travel, done, right? So that's finding a specific piece of information. Only takes about 10 seconds. You don't have to read everything to find it. Next thing, um, here's another question. Your friend doesn't have a TV, but would like to, to would like to watch a film starring Tom Cruise. Which film should you record on your video for your friend? Pretty Boy. ABN Pretty Boy. Pretty Boy. Good. How'd you find that? Based Tom on knowledge. <laughs> Tom Cruise, the prettiest boy of them all in an action packet, blah, 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 blah. The prettiest boy of them all. Tom Cruise's name starts with capital letters. Okay, oh, I see. Here's another one. Peter is interested in wild animals. Which show should he watch? Uh, There's one here. Breaking the Beast. Does everybody see that one? Tracking the Beast? Yeah. So, the little understood wildebeest filmed in its natural surroundings. So, how did you figure that out? Oh, wildebeest. Because it's talking, my question was about wild animals. Right? And you saw Park. the word... 10, 10, 30. And wildebeest well, well, is a wild well, animal. And wildebeest. Monster and the motherless. Good. So it's all about <laughs> keywords in this case, right? Keywords. So wild animals, you see the word wild animals. Oh, the wild animals. the word beast, okay. wildebeest. So it's keywords. You're only looking... You only really need to find one word to know the answer to the question, right? Okay. Another one. Um, which sport can you watch that takes place outside? Nail. Nail. Like uh, uh, ten, ten thirty in the uh, FNB before and uh, ABN and uh, Nail Cook in the faster. Golf review? Yeah, golf review. So if you skim, you find golf and you also find ping pong. And then you just think, okay, which one's an outdoor sport? Golf. That's your answer. Right? So it's pretty simple. Do another one. I just gave you the answer, but. Which sport can you inside, watch that takes place inside? Ping pong masters. Good, ping pong masters. Okay, here's another one. You like modern art. Which documentary should you watch? National News. CBC. Six of the Document, right? More art for everyone. Uh, no, 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 no. More art for everyone. CBC. Ah, uh, should CBC more art for everyone? Okay, I'm hearing different answers. Which one is it? MoMA art for everyone. Yep. Good. How did you figure that out? Oh, uh, from the title. Right, it has the word art in it, right? Right. And you know it's a documentary because in the description it says documentary. Okay. How often can you watch the news? How often can you watch the news? Um, 
hasta var reyde 4 times four times a day yes Okay, and you could be more specific, right? You could say, how often can you watch the news? You could say, well, you can watch the news on two different stations at 6 p.m. Or you could watch it again at 10.30 if you want to watch the nightly news. Or if you're up really late, you could watch it at 1.30. So you could also have a more specific answer by listing the specific times that you can watch the news. Okay, um, one more. Because it's Halloween. Is there a horror film on this evening? Is there a horror film on this evening? 1030. Green Park. Green Park, Stephen Green Park. King's Latest Monster Madness. Green Park. Second channel, 1030. And there's a couple different ways you can figure that out. Not really from the title. Green Park doesn't really help you. Because that could just as easily be a yeah. documentary about a park. So <laughs> you have to actually read the description. <laughs> if you know Stephen King, and you know that Stephen King books are horror books, and one of my hey. favorite authors, then... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Stephen King is the famous. Then you would automatically know that it's horror. Or it says monster madness. You see the word monster, you think of a horror film, right? Yeah, Sheriff, okay. Sammy? Right. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Um, we're actually finished, so does anybody have any questions about skimming, scanning, or anything else? I'm looking for such and something to the full title and uh, like uh, news and some sometimes and confusing uh, it was and uh, because the uh, last one in the national anthem like, uh, <laughs> like uh, this is a uh, news or not <laughs> I think. <laughs> Yeah, Not usually when you're tale. looking for news, the titles of, always yeah. say news. Yeah, Whenever always. you're looking at any sort of TV schedule or anything, it's always going to say news in the title, if it's news. Yeah. So, title is um, Jose, are you asking what figure out means? Yes, I am. Please. Figure out means... Um, that's hard to explain. So, if, Mathematic uh, understanding style, like... a. Uh, yeah, yeah, understanding something. Um, How do we understand me? So, for example, um, let's say I'm looking at my TV schedule because I need to figure out what time the nightly news is on. I need to figure out what time the nightly news is on. So, I need to discover what time understand what time, find the time, okay? So figure out is like when you're trying to look for something specific and you find it, and you're like, oh, yay, I figured it out. Oh, okay. okay. I got figure it out. Thank you. Figure out the time. You're welcome. Okay, we're Thank finished. Thank you for the class. So I'm off for an hour, and then I have another class, so maybe I'll see you guys later. Uh, appreciate that. Wow. Uh, come on, sir. Ready, come on, sir. Great, I love classes today. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I have you. a lot of class today. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 I must go to uh, European night school. So uh, uh, next uh, I maybe not. Tomorrow will be, uh, I hope. Thank you all.